Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a bit of a while, but I'm glad to see you back here in the last hit. But not just that, this is the last, last hit here for the LPL as we are fast approaching finals, the end of playoffs, the regional gauntlet, and of course the end of the season as we head towards Worlds and look for our top four seeds. I'm Asterix, I'm your host, and it's been a pleasure to host all throughout the year and get to this final point. However, I would be remiss not to invite and tell you who joins me every single time. It's Dagda. It's Lyric. You boys looking fresh. I like the wardrobe selection today. We changed once because, you know, the shirts weren't blending. They weren't mending. I thought also slightly creased. A little bit creased. <laughs> I thought mine was a bit too creased, but you guys said no. I'm kind of yeah. thinking I should have listened to myself, but we're going to go on with it anyway. We can't have any second takes, and if you need to go to the bathroom, now is not the time. Just letting myself know, especially. So, <laughs> how have you been? It's been a busy couple of days with playoffs back to back but well, it's not even just playoffs like it was the the split obviously ending and then we we're straight into content then we're into playoffs and mm. then we're into tft mode as well because we're casting that it's all it's been a bit of a hectic <laughs> couple of weeks at least tft is kind of like a break though right like yeah. jordan you and i were talking about this not, nothing's busy compared to spring man <laughs> oh yeah, yeah true even Jeez. even this playoff period with the content is nothing compared to even just the regular split itself and i i think it's a nice way to round out though that considering that Things are getting busy again, and it does feel like that spring period where it's back to back to back to back. And then we're going to get towards finals and regional gauntlet and that big four-day burst period, and we're going to be like, ah, oh, what a year it's been. Because it's only been four. A lot of people forget it was six in week one of spring. Yeah. And then five. Of Sorry, it's five. Yeah, he wasn't. Oh, you yeah. weren't here. That's right. No. Yeah. So it was five of us in, in week one of spring. And then uh, obviously due to COVID, LPL had a massive break of almost a month and a half. And then when we came back, it was only the four of us. Yeah. So it's incredible. I, I know we're kind of tooting our own trumpets and I've started this, but <laughs> it is actually incredible to see that we've made it all without... What was your start again? How many best of fives? Uh, uh, best of threes so spring was 89 yeah. best of threes, but I counted that as series. So some of those are best of fives. Yeah. And then spring, uh, summer was almost 60. Yeah. So we almost did 150 series just yeah. on the English broadcast. So Imagine if we're doing seven days. Each, essentially. Yes. Jesus. So we, yeah. we, we actually did a lot. So props to you guys, I mean, for joining the LPL and coming in and, like, getting thrown in the deep end a little I bit. Mean, I mean, I just assumed that's, like, trial by fire at this stage after your year last year as oh, well. true. I mean, like, it's just like, hey, you joined the LPL here. Just let's go. You're going to yeah. be working 24-7. And, and yeah. I know this wasn't really built up to be, like, a casting episode because we do have a lot to talk about with playoffs today. Mm -hmm. But just quickly, Jordan, I mean, this is your first year of casting, out of coaching, and you've been thrown in the deeper, deeper end than, I guess, the rest of us. <laughs> I right? still remember talking to Clement when he brought me on, telling me, like, he expected me to drown. <laughs> 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 you know, he was pleasantly surprised. It actually turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, because in a way, you do feel like a, a junior Clement Chu. I've been saying it all week long. So you remind me of him. You played Cled on the Rift not only 30 <laughs> minutes ago as well. You know, it was my uh, my ode to Mr. Chu. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to pay our respect. But speaking of paying respect, let's get into the show because I've designed a awesome last last hit last last hit for you here today and considering that we're returning to form we also have to talk about v5 and look at the v5 temperature check oh God. as usual we would normally hype this one up but considering what we've just seen and unfortunately against sooning they dropped the temperature check i've put in is ice cold i'm sorry but i think that's very fair that after what we hoped and expected that v5 have dropped the thermometer a bit. Yeah, it's kind of like what's cooler than being cool. <laughs> it's cold. Uh, it's, like, oh, oh, it's just <laughs> like <laughs> that's been great. I disagree. Like to me, to me, V five were like a nice hot cup of coffee. You know, like all sweat It was nice. It was relaxing. Now maybe it's a, a bit iced coffee, but it's still nice. It's still like warm and endearing. Good for and you. I still expect next split to can be like a nice hot cup of cocoa. So to come right back in. <laughs> all right. I don't think a cup of coffee makes you sad for two days in a <laughs> row after you saw them lose. Coffee's meant to spring you up. <laughs> but that's that's also why it's so amazing. That's how you know this team is the best team ever because Look. their loss. Just at, just at the very <laughs> least, I can say, proud to be on that journey from them from 0 to yeah. 16 all the way to this summer split. The journey is still not over. Like, next year is coming, okay, and we're right. going strong. <laughs> all right, we'll turn the show into 2021 then. Who's going <laughs> to the, win Worlds next year will be V5. And as always, to add on to that, V5 greater than LEC. Do I need a drum? Surely with this, with this loss... Can we take out if we take out the Sooning game? Yes. If no. We put in the Sooning game. Add, I don't know. Add in the Sooning game. They they are better than us. Really? There we go. 
I don't know. I thought this would change. I think they've missed. You really are the Messiah. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. There was a lot of mechanics that weren't really on. Going too hot yeah. in that suiting series, uh, cut out a lot of times. It One really didn't series look versus like like three Which months of said, work. Can I take out the suiting? You don't need to take. It. I'll just add it in, and it's still better than LEC. Well, look, I, I don't know whether to disagree or not because being the scribe of V5, as you know, I have had accomplishments made by the Messiah over there. Um, <laughs> what was our conversation last night? That he's jumped between every single hype <laughs> no, train that has started. <laughs> he's on the LGD <laughs> hype train. Yeah, now. true. Look, yeah. look, here's where I started. Right? <laughs> Did I start on Vici? <laughs> you look, look, look. You that, went, you I started beat five week itself. two. No, no, you started. You started kind of on IG going into MSC. Got yeah. off that one when they were bad. Mm. Got on V five in week two. Then midway through the split, got on Vici as well. <laughs> got off that one. Stayed on V five. <laughs> you were like a bit on Rogue Warriors, but you, yeah. you didn't really. Fully I, I embrace followed that one. you on that one. Yeah, I followed you. You jumped off RNG though. And I you did. jumped on Rogue Warriors, and then Rogue Warriors lost, and you kind of, you still technically jumped off. You had to. That was the last stop. I mean, they were, d- exactly. I yeah. mean, <laughs> I, there was no choice. I got kicked <laughs> off the Rogue Warriors. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and then now you, you're on V5 the whole time. So I don't feel like I'm the only one. And you, I've sir. I've been since the start. Well, well, I was fourth place OGT. To be fair, I never so, yeah. got off like the V5 hype train. Yeah. Like, well, it was, to me, it was always V5 I, and RNG. I could have multiple tickets. I don't have to be on one <laughs> train in one day. I think that's physically impossible. <laughs> well, now I'm on LGD, and that's absolutely okay. <laughs> so, Dagda, what was your final answer? Sorry, B5 greater than the whole of LEC? No. No? No. Okay, so we get a yes and no, and yeah. I'm... I'm oh, I still believe in B5 for next year, so <laughs> I'll give them a yes. I don't want to lose the the trust I've built with the community. Yeah. You know, the, they they rely on me in case Jordan's not on the keyboard. So, we'll move <laughs> forward. Hey, uh, this is meant to be a playoff preview show. I like the way we started this. It does feel nice to end when it's been such a busy split and we get to relax a little bit. But that is not the case because we've just come through round one and quarterfinals. Of course, as people are watching this, it'll be in the middle of TFT, but before the semifinals. So this is a really nice break point for us to cap off how this started. Because playoffs so far, if anyone didn't catch, has been full of surprises, to say the least. Let's start with round number one. And your thoughts on the V5 versus FPX matchup. Because even though V5 were favoured being the highest seed, we did F- expect FPX and someone to turn up to a, a best of five. I wasn't overly surprised. I didn't have the highest of hopes really? for FPX. Um, I've been really disappointed them with them for a lot of the split. And I think actually I've been saying, I don't know if I've actually said on broadcast that I really didn't want FPX to win that series. I don't think they deserve to, yeah. to move on in playoffs. I think there was a, like the growth that we've seen out of V5, the way that they were able to play at the map stage, just how good they looked um, on the rift. It felt like... It felt right that we kind of had that passing of the guard. Um, and I'm glad that we did see V5 overtake them and kind of still keep themselves rolling. But yeah, I wasn't fully convinced by FPX coming in and still haven't. I think it was a bit surprising because, I mean, that series even could have went to five games. It honestly sure. should have went to five games but based off just how Dwimby was playing. But yeah, I'm surprised they weren't able to pull through. It was Gimgoon's TP in the end <laughs> that prevented them from being able to get that game five. But still, a 3-1 scoreline potentially would have been 3-2 is where I expected it to be. V5 was definitely the better team coming in, but it was just surprising how much the other members of FPX weren't able to step up with doing B. It was disappointing because, you yep. know, you expect getting into a best of five situation, FPX then turn into, I guess, what we saw semifinals at MSC, but even beforehand in 2019, best of fives for FPX were one of their strongest trait with how they were drafting, how they were setting up their teams, and how flexible someone like Doombi was and the rest of the team could follow suit. Yeah, and it definitely felt like it was kind of Doombi versus the world on that team. It really did. Um, and I was disappointed with a lot of the players. Like, Tien hasn't been having a good that was at not, all. That was not World's MVP jungler, Tien. No. I mean, it hasn't been like that for that was And that was, like, that was Gimgun's worst series since being subbed back in. That yeah. was LWX's, one of his worst. And Chris Nautilus was horrible, which is sad to say. When he's played 18 games hey, of the we, championship no, we got split. to 20. I'm pretty sure we got to oh, 20 got to by 20? playoffs, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but exactly, that makes the point even worse. So. <laughs> it, it's, it's disappointing when, again, like, the best in their role throughout, like Crisp was known as the best support in 2019, or at least one of. <laughs> Tien was the best jungler. Gimgoon played a role that we've all talked about, and you know, Khan had the, the fluctuation top laners, we could change styles. Doombi was a top tier mid laner as well. And you can't honestly say that anymore after what we've seen in the best of five. And there's a lot of concerns after watching that series that FPX, now guaranteed into regionals, as we'll talk about a little bit later, are not the team they once were. And I think my concern started to come up when they had to sub Gimgoon back in, when they were just like, hey, look, Khan can't work. We don't know how to try and make this team f- 
uh, sealed together. So instead, have Gim Goon come back in. And they had some good series with Gim Goon where they were able to find these fights, uh, especially when Gim Goon was coming in on flanks. And honestly, like compared to their playoff performance, I was nearly kind of like, hey, how about we go back to the Khan Gim Goon <laughs> team where LWX was out sick I for I'm the day. I'm surprised they didn't actually stop a minute. Khan, with Khan, they beat V5 in the regular split. Yeah. yeah. So... And uh, again, V5 struggle against teams that can control side lanes very well because of how V5 overcommits to one side. And they didn't do that at all. So it was pretty surprising. Because I was going to ask you about stylistic difference coming into this series and what you expected with the two matchups going through with drafts and anything on the top oh of your head you want to add. Oh my god, those drafts. Like, <laughs> I came in, once again, because me and, me and Robbie were talking about it for weeks about Lilia, about how she looks pretty useless to us, but I've talked to a lot of pros. A lot of them are on the Lily hype train thinking about, again, how much damage is it going to Because they first picked on red side a couple of times for TN. The first two games, yeah. but it did nothing. It was pretty worthless. They kept picking Callisto. It seemed like they were trying to big brain, like, okay, Sam B's great on Callisto. We're going to take away Callista, and then they kept having it in, like, the worst matchups you can have. I think mm. they had it against Caitlyn one game as yeah. well, and it's like, what are you, you going to do? Yeah. And they just got destroyed every game. And I also remember that, like, speaking of Lilia, Tien had that one big moment. But, the, yeah, apart from that, there was nothing to see from this pick. And the, the amount of times they prioritize it, you're like, well, you got to let this go and actually get on with the series. Yeah, and I want to go back to what you were kind of talking about, is, like, playing through side lanes. I honestly kind of expected them to... I know we saw a little bit of it with Gim Goon, but I wanted to see FPX try and play through that side lane, try and exploit the, the fact that V5 do overextend. But the biggest issue that I've seen on FPX's side is that even when they have compositions that want to try and play through side lanes, they end up using them instead to group as five and then using like, say, Twisted Fate as like a damage dealer yep. instead, which oftentimes it just doesn't make a huge amount of sense in the, the state of the game at that time. So I, I, I kind of disagree on this one. I, I, I actually, know, we I actually like that. About it. Yeah. I don't. I think, I think when you got the Twisted Fate there, they had so many opportunities to actually shove out through side lanes there to get chick damage and actually force a 5v4. Mm. Um, there was like two or three situations where I saw like F doing B would TP to a side lane, not actually get anything from us, and then just destiny to a team fight. I again, I love how creative it is because you can see that teams don't know how to react optimally to those plays. So <laughs> I remember the the most prevalent one. I can't remember which series where he does do that, and then the enemy top laner goes and reacts instead of just staying grouped at the dragon they're about to fight for. So they still are able to force a fight and force picks with numbers advantage, and it happens almost every time. I think the way they use TPs, though not efficient, is creative and has won them a lot of games. I mean, correct. Creative is a word you'd uh, affiliate with FPX anyway. Uh, in terms of V5, though, coming back, because we will talk a lot about FPX when we later in the show when we do mention regionals, but for V5 running into this matchup, we talked heavily about the story being early game, you know, tempo-based compositions. We saw some fluctuation. It was either game three or four where V5 were diversifying their draft yeah. quite a lot. Oriana Ezreal game, yeah. game, I think it was game three, but yeah, they showed both styles. They showed, you know, they could skip. <laughs> Actually... They kind of didn't, now that I think about it. They picked the champions, but I remember... But they were still very tempo-based. First tempo -based. Rift Herald, yes. they still went, they were still fighting with, like, Orion on last chapter and Ezreal on tier and pickaxe, and they didn't care. And they still out mechanic FPX and won. Because the thing is, Rob, we've obviously talked about, like, how FPX played in 2019, how they attacked, but how they were based on tempo through snowballing, you know, LWX and Chris, or Doombi and TN roaming bot. We did also talk heavily about the bottom line for V5 in this series. I thought it would be a very interesting matchup. I, I wouldn't say I was disappointed with the series overall from excitement, but disappointed by FPX's performance. Impressed that V5 held such a standard against a, a, a former world champion. And I think that was one of the big surprises for me was V5, especially as we looked at them as kind of the group of rookies, mm. the group of kind of misfits that were coming in, their ability to perform in that best of five against FPX, making the, the smart calls, although, as we say, kind of fighting a little bit strange. But I think that they were able to just, when we got to those team fights with, like, the Lily and stuff like that, I think this is the biggest problem that I have with Lily is that, like... <laughs> I love how you go back. <laughs> we're we're yeah. setting up, like, <laughs> yeah. oh, take it, but... You know, well, take us back to Lily. <laughs> it was just... Like, you just don't have an opportunity in those fights to kind of do anything, especially those early stages. You haven't ramped up. You don't have any items. Um, and even trying to get in aggressively into these fights means that you're almost fighting at, you know, four and a half to five people. So oftentimes V5 are able to solidify advantages through mm. that. Um, and especially when you look at V5 as a team who will always five-man for that Rift Herald. They love moving the whole team there. It just felt a little bit strange to me as FPX that you don't kind of draft a composition that can fight nice and easy, especially as you said with the high Callista well, priority. I wanted to see more of those FPX, like the rumble mids, you know, the yeah. things that could you know, shut down V5's mm -hmm. bottom lane. And Lyric, before we move on to our next round one series, do you have anything to add, whether it's stylistically or playstyle-wise? So stylistically, I think uh, 
Apex actually wouldn't have even gotten the chance to do what they wanted bot lane because actually V5 conceded bot and they kept conceding dragons. That whole series, they gave up the first two dragons sure. and they just kept swapping for golden towers onto Sam D topside. So I actually think even the macro and the idea that V5 had coming in was just really smart. Yeah, I think it was a, a great series to watch and to see why V5 were just beyond a, a sensation from their spring to summer run that V5 were actually a good team. I say were because when we get to quarterfinals, we'll talk about that. But sorry, Lyric, don't want to make you bad. Um, <laughs> other round one, though, LGD WE, if we're cool to move on, because LGD and WE were a series that, when watching, I thought, you know, this could go either way, but it could be, you know, either very slow or things could really progress forward. LGD are a team that we know we've talked about team fighting quite a lot. WA team, we've talked about a lot about Tichamara and how he progresses through mid. What were your initial thoughts? Jordan, we'll start with you, if that's okay. Honestly, when exactly I expected. I expected WE just get crushed. We even saw during the regular split, like, LGD knew how to play against WE, yep. and they did take it a bit slow, but... WE also did nothing. We saw Teacher Ma just get absolutely outclassed that whole series. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to see because the biggest difference for me in LGD was they were like they showed us that they do have really beautiful and consistent mid game macro. They were doing a good job of like juggling the silent turrets, uh, getting chip damage, getting vision down, setting up picks, trying to bait out the Baron, like and that was one of uh LGD's biggest issues in my opinion throughout the whole split was they were never consistent at doing that, yep. and they did just have to rely on waiting for Drake to come up and then hoping the enemy missed position, so then they're willing to go for the engage. Yeah, I think that's the big thing. The result wasn't surprising. The manner in which it was done was surprising to mm. me. It was just how confident LGD were with the macro in getting these engages. Even that composition that they ran in game number one, which was the kind of poke disengage style of composition, I did not expect at all from LGD, because they do seem like a team that is heavy reliant on Xie and Longxin to find these great engages. And being able to play around a style that was so different from what we've seen out of them previously, I absolutely loved. And then how quickly they were just like, right, we know what to do from here. Let's just snowball this advantage beautifully, not give an opportunity for WE to come back in. And then they were just closing out these games so, so fast. There's a, there's a lot of preparation done. I think props to LGD for handling WE so well, because both of you, there's individual points that you said to me on broadcast. First with Jordan, where you've said to me that WE are that first round playoff team where the dimensions of their compositions, et cetera, et cetera, how it limits them. And then, Rob, you've also talked about those specific compositions and how the, the one dimension can be expanded on. I remember you talked about the diversification of Teacher Mask specifically, but we never got beyond that because WE were still in their, you know, in their format, still that one-dimensional, two-dimensional style, we can call it. And it's disappointing to see that they stop there once again and they're knocked out of world's contention when they are a, a fun team to watch when they get the ball rolling. Definitely. I think the like that push and roam style mid is really interesting where they can, even if they swap over to like the Silas and the Oriana, it is still very much about trying to unlock Teacher Matt and get him to move around the map with Beishang. And I think Beishang as a whole has still looked pretty good. It mm -hmm. just I think with Shie and how good he's been looking all playoffs long, how good Peanut has been looking all playoffs long as well, it just felt like you never really got an opportunity for Beishang to actually have an impact in this game because you were already having Shie shut down Teacher Man the mid. Peanut was looking so oppressive on picks like the Graves. Yep. It just meant that I when we got to mid game, he had nothing to do. I do also feel like in hindsight, the meta has definitely evolved from where teams that had the push and move mids aren't working, FPX isn't working, W's not working. Even V5 played like that a lot throughout the split. And sure. now we're seeing the opposite because of how the bot lane and jungle meta evolved. Now it's a lot more about having these more either control mage mids or, or things like the Zoe we're seeing a ton of, right, in playoffs. That where, okay, we're seeing things like the Ash, the Jin, the Bards come to mid lane and take pressure with mid, not right. not vice versa. It's not about mid jungle linking up and going, you know, so the reverse. Are you saying it's how we enhance lane dominance in LPL? Is that a, a better, a, a, an easy way of saying it? Yes. Like... For the fact that, again, a lot of our jungle champions got nerfed, a lot of pretty much every AD carries got nerfed, which has brought things like Ash and Jin up to the meta. It's like that has changed the pool in mid lane because, right, things like Rumble Graves sounds weird. Like, you're not going to play Rumble with Graves. You're not going to play Rumble with what else is meta? What, what am I missing? Rumble with Volleybear, Rumble yep. with Set. It, it, it's just not a strong 2v2 that works out in these early skirmishes. It's not like a Jarvan. So I think that's really changed to how we're going back to things like the Zoe. You can even see globally a lot of Azirs coming back into the meta. and. Sure. It Here looks well. like it's kind of like seeping in with players like Rookie picking up the Oriana. Once again, not a champion that wants to push and move out of lane. You'd prefer for your team to come to you. Yep. So it's kind of interesting to how the meta has shaped up, has kind of helped teams like Sooning really do much better. 
And I think as well, that's kind of why we're seeing teams that can have a support that roams a lot more yes. work out a lot better. So, like, WE, we saw Missing trying to move out a little bit, but so certainly, like, Mark, at least the early stages for LGD, in the games that he played, was getting out super early, yep, moving yep. mid with this Leona. Like, you'd see him level four, level three, mid lane, and then actually getting picks, getting kills, and grouping up with Peanuts. So, I think that kind of, like, just bouncing off your point is what makes the big difference here for LGD is the... Especially if they, like... They just go Kramer Ezreal. And then it's like, cool, we're just going to leave Kramer bot. This is the guy that we just want to leave the farm up anyway. He'll be sitting off in a, like, this, every single time LGD play, it is pretty much just about how do we get as much gold as possible onto Kramer. It's like, okay, we're going to make a play bot side of the map. He is like 70% first terror participation, like the highest in the whole team. They'll set him up with turret plates and first turret gold. Then they'll put him into a, either mid lane or actually rotate him up towards top lane it, to just a nice pick up a bunch save, of CS. Right? Yeah, exactly. With everyone else so active on them, Kramer's always that fail the, safe. That yeah. The amount of times it. I've seen Peanut level 3 gank bot is set, which is like very uncommon. Even even when their lane is the one pushing it, like he'll yeah. still go in like the enemy tri brush if they're on red side and try to set something up. It's just insane. Like It yeah. just shows how much they are playing to set up Kramer. And how well Peanut is playing as well as a side note, especially against WE. Before we go into the quarterfinals, is there anything you want to touch on for LGD WE? Because round one, Again, pretty much as expected if you were looking at recency for teams like V5 versus FPX. And if you looked at LGD WE throughout the end of the split as well. I just want to say this is a highlight reel for Shea. Like, yeah. even in the game that they lost, Shea's Oriana was had that insane. Pencil? I know, yeah. He should have had the oh. pants on Silas. The Oriana and that was wasn't the real. Silas, yeah. yeah. The Silas was, yeah. like, amazing. Yeah, and yeah he, he's just been playing out of his mind. Mm -hmm. He has his, like, set few champions that he just plays so well on. And, yeah, it looks like it like looks like an S tier mid laner yes. on like a hands like champions and when he doesn't get them I still think he's like pretty much A tier right yeah. so he's just solid across the board and even that's the thing I think it was actually maybe it was Munchables I was having this talk with but it's like what do you ban against LGD right now because as you talked about like Shea has got the twist of fate the Silas the Zoe that he all looks absolutely incredible on then you look over at Peanut you gotta get rid of the Graves you gotta get rid of the Niddly like you're, and yeah. the set as you, well you you're starting to run through it was yourself we yeah. could talk about it more when we get to the IG series but <laughs> Man, you need to ban Nidalee and Twisted Bay. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't care about the Zoe. I don't care about the Silas. Ban the yeah, Nidalee, ban yeah. the Twisted that, Bay. That first pick, that first pick uh, Twisted Fate is, is a fun <laughs> note to talk about as well. Gentlemen, let's progress forward. I want to come back to V5 because after beating FPX, of course, they went into the quarterfinals versus Sooning. And a lot of us, I think, was it Munchables the only person who predicted Sooning? Out of us, yes. yes. Out of us, yes. yes. Uh, because V5 were built on the hype. But not just that, V5 were built off the momentum of FPX, and I thought, oh, this is the run, they're going to get to top esports. They ran into Sooning, and I think, to be critical of V5 for the first time, I think this split, V5 played some of their worst League of Legends, and Sooning played some of their best, and I would say most consistent League of Legends, so they kind of swapped paths as to what I was personally running into the series yeah. with. I think you could see the prep that Sunny had put in. They really knew how they wanted to play against V5. Um, mm. Like, Jordan, you've been talking extensively about this. Hey, you know, V5 will group to one side of the map to make a play towards a tower to try and get a structure for themselves. And Sunin were more than prepared for that. Every single time that you saw V5 trying to go for these plays, Sunin were responding elsewhere, either getting, like, a Tier 2 tower for the Tier 1 that they got topside or making something happen elsewhere in the map. So V5 are always at a deficit. Mm. So I think the prep from Sunin coming into this series was absolutely incredible and as you said like their team fighting looked far better um, and honestly v5's team fighting for me was pretty lackluster like especially molan and zoe like i have high high expectations for this guy yep. and when i see him consistently missing paddle like Everything. One, that play against the renekton in the top lane where he missed like three four paddle stars in a row and then ended up having to flash and burn a whole bunch of summoner spells because he wanted to use the passive damage to kill the renekton i was just like What's not happened? What not what you'd expect. Yeah, yeah, and I would do want to go back to Sooning's planning. Not even just talking about on the server, which was amazing, but I even feel like they just outdrafted V5. Maybe not in in isolation, mm. but in terms of what you know, how V5 plays best. They consistently took away the Ash. They consistently drafted these compositions that did much better in the early Rift Herald fights and in the early Dragon fights because, as we saw against FPX, even if V5 drafted Oriana Ezreal, they're still going to fight you for that first Rift Herald. So. I feel like even though those team fights V5 played pretty badly, especially well, this was Mole's worst series. Uh, I don't even just say like all year. It compares like, to the it compares to some of his worst spring series. Remember I, where I think it's even worse. Yeah, I think it's even worse. Like it was because the thing is, he made bad decisions in spring when his team was bad. He played mechanically bad this series. Like again, yeah. he was missing everything. His Oriana game was absolutely horrendous, and that's when you could tell he tilted. But I feel like even compositionally. Like, V5 weren't set up to win against what Sooning drafted, yep. where V5 are strong. 
and it was weird because they were trying to change up their play style. We saw when they put Bubu back on the Lucian because he looked amazing on against FPX, mm. but they tried to commit resources to him. Ben had uh, Ben was very like smart. He took electrocute in the matchup. He bought double serrated Dirk and realized, hey, they're gonna keep two v wanting me, but I'm always gonna take one of them down Her with me. On the, on the yeah. He got back up in the matchup, and yeah, I feel like the winning thing for Sooning was their prep. Their prep, their draft, how they read V5 was flawless. And also, again, coming back to Sooning, having some of the best performances of their life. I mean, Bin versus his old teammate at mm -hmm. Viewview. SOFM played Veta League of Legends that I've seen in, in a long while. Remember? Yeah, he, I agree. He was on Snake for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And coming to Sooning, we're like, well, SOFM has dropped down the tier list, but this gives him a bit of new light. SOFM has always been, like, right, hot or cold. Always yeah. been one or the other. He's never been in the middle to where this series was consistent across the board. He played extremely well. Really outdid Weiwei. Felt like he had more tools than Weiwei in this series, but SOFM looked amazing. Whenever he gets Lee Sin, man, it is a highlight reel. He just True. finds the perfect angles to get those kicks off to set up for the team well. And Sick. I truly believe this was the best series Sooning played all year. And that is amazing for the fact that it was the highest pressure moment there was. Yes, it was do or die because they lost here chances are they wouldn't make playoffs with the way things have gone in the bottom side of the bracket. Uh, Juan Fung also massively impressed Sorry, me. Regional. This uh, this series, I think when we saw, like, I'm not, I, well, we were chatting about off here, I'm not a big fan of the Jin in the bottom lane, and I've been looking at it, I see that you can kind of push back and forth a little bit, you got trades through the Deadly First, through the Wave and all, I understand, I just haven't actually seen it really have a big impact until I saw Juan Fung on it, I was yep. like, oh my god, actually, this is what this is actually capable of doing, yeah. um, and especially when we saw it on like both sides of the matchup, his Ash looked absolutely incredible as well, where he was able to, like, any time Mole tried to portal jump, was like, cool, there's an Enchanted Crystal Arrow straight into your face, it yep. was really, and really impressive, let's, so let's remember the Juan Fung overall has been great. He yeah. played it in spring, too, like, he was going to pull it out before it was yeah. better, so mm -hmm. it shows he's comfortable I mean, on this champion. Yeah. He's got a lot of pocket picks. Remember, he's the Draven player that we saw yeah. against Jackie Love. Hey. You better get oh me Draven. Oh my! Long, please. <laughs> you just. Yo, I didn't realize. Yeah. And you and I casting that series. Yes, we so are. Sorry, Dagda. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Sorry, you have JDG, uh, I'll man. Take, I'll take JDG and, and LGD, 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 I suppose. Oh. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but, um, um, but for V5 yeah. and Sooning, I, I think while it was like Sooning Light versus Sooning, considering all the, the history of these players, it didn't deliver on an individual level that I was expecting from V5, but at least we got to see the, the best of Sooning again. Yeah, I just on the Juan Fung thing, sure. just real quick, um, for anyone who hasn't read the story of Juan Fung, I'd recommend giving it a read. It is Steve. pretty heartbreaking, um, but it's good to see him obviously in a better spot now. But mm. um, definitely the trials that this guy has overcome and then to hit the main stage as a rookie and look as strong as he has. I mean, I think he's in both our top four for yeah, AD cars at the moment. Top three. Yeah, I this think it was rookie, basically yeah. Juan Fong and Joe Mung for me were the two that I'm trying to swap back and yeah, forth yeah. between. Yeah, yeah, there's like a couple, but, but... Yeah, but either way, he's been absolutely insane. Uh, I, think I he said looks so it good. against V5. I said on the broadcast, this guy's the future of the LPL. Like, this guy is a Uzi, Jackie Love caliber yep. player in the making. Yeah, the, the highest of ceiling possible, I think, at this point. Uh, V5 sooning, we are going to move on, gentlemen, to quarterfinals of IG and LGD because on the bottom side of the bracket, a lot of people thought, ah, it's IG. They played a best of three against Vichy at the end of the split. It was chaotic, IG style. It was pretty average. <laughs> but that was Vichy at the end of the split. It was the last day. Mm -hmm. They, didn't, they yeah. weren't going to move from third. They then run into this best of five. And IG were... A bit all over the place, <laughs> Mr. Dagner. Yeah, I mean, drafts were all over the place. Their gameplay was all over the place. There wasn't really but anything that looked good. Their, their draft side. in the past has been all over the place, yeah. but isn't it just toppled, you know, topped by the quality of play? So I think what annoyed me was against top esports, when they actually said, all right, lads, we've got to take this serious, their drafting was really good. Like, really, really good. They outdrafted the top esports in both the games that they won. In the best of three. In the split. best of three, the regular split. Yep. Then we come into this game and they go, do you know what, Herp Derp, let's just pop Lucian top. <laughs> Play oh for some God. reason. I'm just like, the composition did not make <laughs> any sense. That was pretty harsh. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Rob, you're meant to be so the annoyed. nice. You, you're between two people <laughs> yeah. that are a little bit negative sometimes. You're Mr. Happy, you know, I'm just always smiling. I'm just here ready with all my positive points <laughs> yeah. about IG. And and now you're herped <laughs> up. Well, sorry, didn't continue. Make sense. So, in a composition that you already know you're against a Zoe and an Ezreal. So they got long range. They're like, hey, let's lock in Callista. Well, it wasn't Puff's fault. Callista was first pick. Then they go, let's lock in another short range AD carry with absolutely zero front line so we can't do anything. And then they just focus from afar and they win regardless. They and have a better front line. And they also have no engage. So yeah, even no if they did yeah. want to fight. <laughs> yeah, no engage, no front line. You 
get outranged. It's like, where is your wing condition? Limited tank shredding as yeah, well. I mean, your wind condition is snowball, which, yeah. ag again, IG's drafts suck. I accept, though. It's IG. I'm not going to... I'm not going to hound on IG whenever their drafts suck because they've shown they can win with, again, the yeah. random BS compositions they put together. But, yeah, those, I, I those don't know. I think I think it has to get to a stage where if we're actually looking at IG as a top team, we got to stop giving them this pass because I think, honestly, the, 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 like there were so many options that you could have gone for there. The like, problem is yeah. every time they get to, like, this playoff situation and you're like, well, regular season, top of the table, right? It was 14-2 yeah. and two in spring, and then we got to... Um, and then we got to uh, summer. Yeah, 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 we got to regions, la I mean, regions last, year. last year. You're and talking about. By the way, like I uh, coming into this playoffs, IG was my favorite to win the whole thing. I, so this I, is, I yeah. said, well, I yeah. want to say, and again, this is not some like big brain prediction, but it's just because I know how IG works. I was telling Munchables the, the day before yesterday. So after our cast, I was like, dude, and I was telling one of the guys in the office, like IG is the team that when you believe in them, are going to yeah. suck. And yeah. when you don't believe them, are going to show up. So now, yes. they will re win regionals. They will for sure go to Worlds. I'm As confident that seed. because now none of us believe in them. Yeah. It's how they work. That's how IG work. Also, I did tell Rob on the day, uh, do you remember in the in the dressing room, I said, oh yeah, be a it's, it's going to yeah. be a 3-0, guys, or a 3-0 against IG. <laughs> yeah. And then Walla from the Chinese cast just laughed. And then I came in afterwards, I'm like, I told you. <laughs> I told you. It's going to be a 3 -0. I don't want to downplay how, obviously, we're making it sound like it wasn't yeah. a massive offense. This was... Like, unbelievable, in my opinion, how LGD yes. dismantled IG. And I want to take it a different route real quick and say, in my opinion, the most important thing this series was how much Kramer and Mark dismantled Puff and yeah. Balor. Oh, yeah. Because, man, they were getting destroyed every single matchup, even when in two of the three matchups, IG had a winning bot lane. And even in the third game, the Jin Bard yeah. shouldn't really get destroyed by whatever LGD had. And yeah, then the Ezreal looks. Ezreal, yeah, 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 exactly. And then we just kept sawing Mark. This was the best series I've ever seen Mark play. Man, Mark was yep. so good because he was consistently roaming around the map, setting up Peanut for his amazing Nidalee mechanics, helping him snowball head, shutting down the shy that game two on the Lucian. Mm. And, like, uh, I don't even know what Ning could have done because I saw a lot of people saying, okay, Ning didn't play well, Ning didn't play well. It's like, sure, Ning didn't play, like, good, but... I don't feel like Ning really got a chance of how much Puff and Ballad got destroyed. Yeah, and he wasn't the problem either, you know, yeah. for, for what we were seeing on the Rift. Mark is a good compliment because alongside Peanut, there was a lot of that. I think, uh, was it you, Jordan, who said this to me the other day? The 2019 crisp that we saw no. with very much like roaming That's what in he the looked jungle. like. Yeah. like and again, that's insane to how bad IG was that we're making Mark look like 2019 Chris. But that also speaks, I guess, like heights to how well Mark played in this yeah. series. And I really hope he can keep it up against JDG because if he can, I feel like that will be a way that they can actually win as underdogs. So quickly, Dagda, was this a... Because we, we do have to run through and I want to start talking about MVPs. To finish off this quarterfinal, is it just down to how IG played or stylistically? Do you want to talk about LGD? I think LGD absolutely played their socks off. Mm. Like, this is the best LGD I have seen all split, and it's in this yep. playoffs. Like, every single member on this team is stepping up. Long Xing has looked absolutely incredible. His engages have been nuts. Yep. Looking at Peanut, who has been what ever the well nine times out of ten he's a winning matchup but either way he's snowballing that advantage in the jungle super super well and then especially as we said with mark coming up and getting involved means that then you are guaranteed a jungle win for lgd which sets up shia to look fantastic who's absolutely playing Again. out his mind and then kramer late game ezreal is just just killing everyone everywhere stylistically <laughs> lyric do you want to leave it somewhere with how lgd put ig in a body bag I mean, again, I, I truly feel like it was just through bot difference. Like, okay. I feel like Kramer and Mark just looked amazing. Okay, nice place to leave it there. LGD moved to semifinals, which we'll talk about in a second. But leaving uh, on a positive note, so far, who would you give as your MVP to playoffs? Now, this will change, as everyone out there will know. Uh, when we get towards grand finals and we see our semifinalist teams of Top Esports and JDG play, that could maybe shift gears. But playoffs so far, Dagda, you're up first. I'm kind of caught between two places. It's Peanut or Shie for me. Um, I've been really, really okay. impressed with LGD as a whole. Um, Shie against WE was by far the standout performer. But Peanut has always been kind of at his back, egging him on, kind of giving him a lot of these advantages as well. So I think it's, I'm going to kind of duo MVP there. I think that mid-jungle 2v2 has okay. been the focal point for LGD. I know against IG there was issues in the bot side, but I think Peanut did such a good job of exploiting them in a lot of situations and working alongside Kramer and Mark right. to solidify them. So, yeah, I'm kind of going to cop out Peanut and give the, the double. I'm yeah. okay with that. A couple's fine. Sir, what do you think? I mean, if, if Dagda thinks he's copping out, I'm super copping out. <laughs> what are you going to say? I can't pick an MVP so far. <laughs> like, Why? The thing is, oh, 
like V five just got completely dismantled oh, by by Sunni. It's like. Who How is he going to give it to Mole now? Well, no. It's <laughs> 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 who, who on Sunni can I pick? It's like I could say the, the members of the teams, it's between, like, I'd say for Sunni, it's between SOFM and Huanfong so far. And I agree with, with Dagda, it's between Peanut and Xie for LGD. But to me, the most convincing series of playoffs as far was LGD against WE because, like, sure, they stomped them individually. I don't think Morgan and Teacher Mop played well at all. Mm. But it also felt like. LGD had to like dig deeper, like play out like the macro game well. We got to see standout performances from people like Xie to where like IG's bot lane just collapsed and LGD just took advantage of that so well. It's yeah. like, I didn't get to see too much in that series. And then the same thing goes for V5 where Suning's plan was so well, they played so well as a team. It's like, who is a standout performer? SOFM and Huanfong, but again, like nailing it down to one for me is really tough. All right. Well, I'm happy to accept that answer because it will I change. I do four. <laughs> <laughs> we will obviously have a different of opinion. We got the regular season MVP, and we still haven't so seen I, that regular season I'm going to change MVP. mine to the entirety of LGD, oh, actually, just okay. the big five. <laughs> I'm glad I allocated three minutes of this segment. Let's move <laughs> forward. Uh, because we have more playoffs to talk about. It's into semifinals starting next week. As our audience is seeing this now, it will only be a couple of days. Of course, we are recording. What day is it? Boys, it's Monday. 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 Yep, hey, Monday. we normally record on Sunday. This uh -huh. is a new mm. Monday. And we did Friday before as well. Oh, so, man, uh, we're really <laughs> messing it all up, aren't we? <laughs> well, semifinals. That is on the way with finals to follow suit. And also the third place match, was, which is important for seeding. When we go into this full screen, as you can see on your screens now, if you're watching from YouTube, but uh, as also a side note to anyone who's listening on Spotify or anywhere on Anchor, at the moment, we're looking at the semi-finals of Top Esports Sooning in the upper bracket, which is coming on the 22nd, and on the 23rd, the day after, JDG versus L LGD, with the third place match on the 25th of the two losing teams. So let's start with the top side of the bracket here, Top Esports versus Sooning. We've only seen one series of Sooning. Unfortunately, V5 didn't make the run. We talked a lot about Sooning showing new levels of play, and I think stylistically there could be some differences. I've used that word a lot today. Mm. Against Top Esports running into the semis. I'm actually kind of curious as to how this one goes. I feel like Top Esports are the favoured, but I've been really disappointed with Karis' jungling at the moment, oftentimes. But like, we had this conversation where when I look at his jungle pathing in the early stages, he ends up pathing like, from his strong side down towards his weak side, and oftentimes ends up caught out in situations where he starts to fall behind. And especially if SOFM is playing as well as he did against Victory 5, I'm wondering how that is going to work out. But I think when we look at the skirmish potential where Sunin oftentimes kind of end up in this situation. I think top esports pound for pound are just mm. individually better. And I think when we get to those team fights then that's where top esports will shine. Yeah, I want to preface this with I honestly have no idea how this will go. Like <laughs> <laughs> after after seeing how Sunin played against Victory Five, and again it was completely different to how they played during the whole split. Yeah. I don't know how Sunin's gonna show up. Is like, Sunin gonna keep again? playing like that aggressively? Are they gonna change up their style to maybe try and counteract maybe Knight or Jackie Love, something along those lines? Hard to say, but I agree with, with Rob in the sense that, like, at their peaks, top esports just outskill them in every role. Yeah. Like, even Bin, who I think is a future prospect to be maybe the best top player in the region, if 369 plays like he was at the start of the split, 369 was the best top player in LPL this, this split. We all know the, the heights of Knight. We all know the heights of Jackie Carso, though not playing well really this year at all. I mean, obviously, 2017, 2018, 2019, Carso was always a top three to five jungler in the world. Easily. So, like, the pieces are there for top esports, but things were looking shaky. The thing about them, though, is they're really clutch. So that's the thing that also sways to me is their individual potential and their clutch factor. It's even how they beat Suning in the regular split, right? Because yeah. Suning should have won both of those games, but top esports with cheeky barons or pop-up performances from Knight were, was able to bring it back, but... To me, this is close. Like, this is, if anything, this is like a 45-55 a matchup for top esports from what we saw from Sooning in their quarterfinal I, match. If they can give that to us again. I think one of the big things as well is, like, Jackie Love. <laughs> I know this sounds weird, but, like, Jackie Love has been pretty inconsistent for me where he will go super aggressive in the lane, he gets caught out, he gets punished, and then they start to really can I, fall Can I correct you? He's been very consistent in that. Consistent <laughs> in that <laughs> yeah, there. But I think that's where you could actually look to exploit that quite a bit, um, especially Yuanja, as we've talked about for a while, because remember, I'm top esports. So I think 
if you are starting to play around there as soon as you get Wan Fong fed, I mean, you're off to the races at that stage, right? Yep. Wan Fong has proven that he can take these carrier performances and run away with them. And then it becomes an issue of, okay, well, this AD carrier, this bot lane is so big. When we get to those skirmishes where it ends up being, okay, well, top esports individually might be better. But if you've got a 3,000, 4,000 gold lead on your back, I mean, that shouldn't be an issue. That, that's why I wonder if they'll go for that same route against V5, where it was very much about, like, early skirmishing, playing off-tempo, stacking up, like, dragons and heralds, or if they're going to just match top esports, because that's what they pretty much did all split long, right? You keep Huan Fong on some kind of, like, farming, scaling AD carry. You leave him bot lane. Sword Art's going to go roam around the map, mm. while Huan Fong's just going to farm. Very Jackie Love-esque, and you're playing more for those later skirmishes, because if they go for that... It'll be interesting because, again, that's where top esports thrive. That's where top esports, in my opinion, should outdo them. But then when you mention Jackie Love's mistakes, it's like, ah, uh, there's, there's like always a chance for suiting to punish a mistake coming yes. out from TS. And I also want to highlight SOFM really quick because despite the fact that in the regu regular season, I don't think he was a top five jungler. I don't no. think he was bad by any means. He was still good. But I think our top three to five was like extremely surprising. In playoffs so far, again, his performance against V5 was like MVP level, and he really should be able to outdo Karsa in this series. With Karsa's racing form. Yes. I think it's fun. Yeah. it's really interesting to discuss the dynamic of story coming into this, because what we've seen of top esports finishing off the regular season in the past couple of weeks of it was an inconsistent TES that didn't fit the the you know name of best team in the LPL. Like We stopped calling them that when we saw the flaws and teams getting a better read on what was supposedly our best team, and Sooning recently have performed better. So I think we're shifting roles again here in the semifinal where Sooning may have, I don't know, a bit more support than we like, expected. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like shifting roles might be like a bit too... Too much? Because shifting roles would make it sound like Sooning are favorites. Okay. But I, I agree with, again, if you had asked me before the V5 Sooning semifinal, if either of these teams would have really been able to contest top esports, I would have said no. Especially Sooning, because... Yeah. Again, coming off the regular, coming off Sooning barely beating FPX with no LWX in the roster. True. My God, I was not high on Sooning. To now, it's like, man, this is extremely close. This is like as 50 50 as it gets. And I mean, that's the other semifinal as well, but we'll get there. I think there's a couple <laughs> of big things here as well for like the draft that st stand out to me. It's like, hey, if we see Jackie Love go towards this kind of Ezreal pick that he's been going towards a lot, hey, do we just go for these early skirmishes of Sooning where we can just take over very quickly with early dragons, moving towards Rift Heralds, we just start to get the snowball going early, especially something like the Renekton in the top side of the map. I think for Bin, who's been looking really strong on a 369 as well, I think that can define a lot of that top side pressure. And maybe that if, say, it's 369 is on the Renekton, where you can start to play play more aggressively through that top side as top esports. So now Bin's already set back behind. You've then got Nice who can have some pressure through that mid lane as well. Like this is where I think you can start to see top esports played out, but it does end up still very up in the air because I want to see the early skirmishes from Sunni and if they can keep the pace that they had against V5. I want to see what happens with Caitlyn and this, this, these oh, comps because uh, we saw Sunni trying it a bit later on. I think they played it in their two wins against Vici, but... <laughs> They should not have won those games. They were not actually like playing it very, very well to where obviously we haven't really seen TS run that comp like in recent memory. So that'd be interesting. I think they, they actually did it the, their last they couple did, of games. They did yeah. once, I'm yeah. pretty sure. And but Jackie Love looked Looked like legit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he did a good yeah. performance. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think they played it only once though. So I want to see, especially with all the practice time they've gotten from having to buy all the way until semis, what they have up their sleeves. And especially with cheeky picks this series. I expect a bunch of them because yeah. whether it's 369 pulling out something like his Malkai's right out during the split or Angel and SOFM bringing out the Pantheon Lilia, which we talked about the other day. I've seen them spamming in solo queue that, I don't know, this one can be a spicy one. Which no one ever thought would be said with Sooning versus Top Esports. I just, as a last thing though, please, this is still Top Esports in playoffs. Like, it feels like towards the end of the split, they're kind of getting a little bit lax today. So it goes like, all right, mm. cool, whatever. But it's We're suiting guaranteed. in playoffs now. I know. <laughs> yeah, true. But I still think we kind of got to give credit where credit's due. Yep. Like, the veterancy, the experience on this lineup, like, it just... It feels like at some stage it's just going to be like, all right, lads, we're about to turn it on. It's semifinals. Let's get ourselves to finals. Would you be ready to give me something like a prediction? Just a quick one. You've talked about Sooning being maybe ability Look, to match in the early if, game. If I had to, I would say 3-2 top esports, but... I have no idea, man. I truly, right. I truly have no idea. We can leave it loose. Of course, it will be on the broadcast as the uh, casters jump on stage. Yep. Dagda, just a quick 
yeah. flourish. I think it'd be three one top esports. I still think Sydney would get one, but it's gonna be three zero top esports. Oh my days. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Let's move on to the next Sydney series. Sydney fans are gonna no contact <laughs> by you. It doesn't matter. Top esports fans are gonna be clapping because top esports will move into that MSC mode and we'll go forward. Now that out of the way, not really out of the way, honestly. Top Esports is suiting is one that I'll be casting with lyrics, so I look forward to that. But this is one you and Munchables are going to be casting, Dagda, JDG and LGD, the other semi-final. And again, a little bit of a difference to what we might expect in Top Esports and suiting, where tempo could be really talked about heavily. JDG and LGD might be just like, let's get to those team fights. Yeah. Let's get to those full five-on-fives. <laughs> And see you at 40 minutes I'm the game. so excited for this series. Like, I am massively, 30. massively excited. I think, especially, like, right now, I know Weiwei was definitely up there, but currently in playoffs, like, it's Kanavi and Peanut are the best junglers for me in playoffs right now. Yep. And seeing those no two... No respect for my man, SOFM. No. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them are, uh, in my head, the, the two best junglers right now. And I want to see them both face off, especially, like, the likes of Kanavi's Lee Sin, Peanut's Lee Sin, I think are two contested picks. We've now got the Kindred, the Graves, that have both been... Like, these are the carry junglers of the LPL plus SOFM. <laughs> I think this is well really, done. really interesting now to see. So um, that's a super hype matchup for me with the recent performance from Mark and then Lumel. I think that's going to be a super interesting matchup as well as like who can have those big impact the moments thing that's in the interesting to me too is the dimension of top late now that Long Xing is willing yeah. to pull out things like the Camille, which yeah. I wouldn't have expected at all. Had a great yeah. series, you know, versus IG, Long Xing has been coming out of his shell all playoffs long yeah. and towards the end of this. And it's too. brilliant to see the team playing around him, right? Yep. I mean, you go for, they're like, right, we got Shia's Twisted Fate. What's a really strong composition? Camille, let's just play through that side lane. Must feel really good. Yeah, so for an yeah. RNG top player, <laughs> exactly. must feel yeah. really good to have that. <laughs> Christmas came early. so yeah. <laughs> But still, this is, this is where I think this is a super close matchup now. And although it originally, like coming into playoffs, it got to this point. I would just been like, yeah, cool, JDG. Best of luck in finals. It's going great. Now I'm actually at the point where I'm like, I think LGD could win this. But their current form and actually how shaky JDG have looked with Lumao in lane hasn't been looking that strong. The Yegao, I think, as well, has been looking a lot worse, both in lane and out of lane. I honestly feel like with LGD in their current form could be JDG. All right, Cowboy. Lyric? Well, I think this matchup is like very 50-50 as well because okay. LGD are playing the best League of Legends of their lives. And... The thing that's exploitable to me is really bot lane. We talked about, like, even though I think Loken's had the best split he's ever played, I mean, Kramer and Mark were just playing so well in their laning phases against IG. So I think that's a potential punishing point where they can find a lead, but they don't really look at top, right? I mean, Zoom has really come back into form, in my opinion, in the second half of the split. If we're just looking at second half, clear standout best top laner, in my opinion. I'm really excited to see what he could do, how he can influence the map. We've seen JDG have a couple of games where they are actually playing around him, so that's been a bit surprising. And with Peanut playing so well, I think I'd still edge it out to Kanavi because, I mean, heck, you were the one really on the Kanavi hype train, yeah, yeah. but more so than me, pointing out like how good his play's been, especially on champions like the Lee Sin. So the big thing for me here is more so that Kanavi, I think, is... I don't know. I think Kanavi's definitely a better jungler than Peanut right now. The problem more so is how the team of JDG plays around him. Like, JDG, although they used to in spring play towards him, they haven't been doing that at all anymore. Like, Lu Mao has been sure, like pretty slow to get out of lane, and even when he does, he's actually usually behind because he's been caught out a couple of times. They're forced back in, which means that then he's not having the big impact to play with Kanavi. Same with Yigao. Because Yigao's laning phase has taken a hit, then you don't have that support again for Kanavi. So I think the big difference maker here is that LGD in their current form just beat lanes and that just gives Peanut so much more opportunity to play against Kanavi. That's the big factor for me here. Uh, I just don't think Kanavi gets as much support as Peanut does. I just wonder because I actually don't necessarily think Yigao's really much worse of a laner than Shie on Yigao's champions. But now I'm starting to think, hmm, I wonder how it's going to affect JDG with the Cinder nerf because we've seen a lot of teams pretty much get off that Cinder boat and mm. to me that was a very consistent champion for him to fall back on and you know he's had some good like games on things like Silas but definitely nowhere near the level of right the Cinder, the LeBlanc, the Azir, things along that line so that's a point I'm scared for. The one edge I'll, I'll truly just give to JDG is their team fighting. Yep. I, I even think even in the series, their previous two series, LGDs, that like, they never really had to go team fight on equal footing with the enemy team. They almost always had an advantage at that point. So, if that's where, if JDG can get to that point, I think we even talked about this early in the split. Like, I think we were comparing JDG and V5. When JDG against most, like, top teams, I think stacks up so well in these team fights. I think Zoom plays such a good, like, 
not even just front line, but like a disruption role so well, being able to zone out those back line carries, give room for Loken to be that big team fight carry. And that's even kind of where I think Yigal works out as well. Yigal's not necessarily meant to be a big team fight carry himself. He's kind of more of a, a distraction, more of, okay, I'm putting off a bit of damage so Loken and Kanavi can really be big carries. And that's where I'd have faith in JDG able to take a win. That's how they won a lot of the series during the regular season where, you know, games that should have been lost, and then we get to a JDG team fight. It's like, well, actually, no, the game's just swung back in their favor, right? I also want to mention, I think JDG's drafts are going to be 100 times better yeah, than IG's, yeah, yeah. Okay. and their champion pools are obviously, like, 20 times better than yeah. WE. So, like, we're finally, hopefully, going to get to see, like, a battle of, like, the mines and draft and on the rip True. because, the, again, LGD is, like, extremely impressed me in both their series. But I want to see what happens, like, when they're actually contested, when their backs are actually up against the wall because we haven't seen that yet. Rob? I'd like to ask you one question here, mm -hmm. and this question aligns with the other. As we get towards the end of this segment for JDG and LGD, thoughts about where you're putting your... Um, what was I going to say? Put your money where your mouth is. You have no money. Um, <laughs> 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 we 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 had a drink last night. We, we spent it all. Um, True. JDG versus <laughs> LGD, where would you give me a, a little soft prediction if we're, if we're happy to move forward? I'm going to go a bit spicier. I think 3-2 LGD. Oh, I think I'm going to go spicier. 3-0 yeah. JDG. Oh, okay. Jesus. <laughs> well, I, I got the pepper, and I'm going to say 3-0 LGD. No. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, no, I'm actually going to stick with it. Forget it. What have I got? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing, apparently. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, one question for the semifinals, though, because I, I was just kind of thinking how best to wrap this up. In our semifinals, what is the core role throughout these four teams that will influence each semis does it line up do you say that jungle is going to influence each semi-final i mean by default yeah <laughs> but okay. i think there's it's kind of hard um it feels more like there's so many moving parts at the moment between like the jungle support synergy yep. you're also jungle mid synergy and um, i think there's a lot that you kind of got to try and on well break down but i definitely i think i mean a cop out would be jungle but like i think a cop out would be jungle support yeah. so i want to take this a different way of a surprisingly like a surprising role that i think is going to have a massive impact is top lane Good. because again when we look at the top laners who we have left like bin has been one of the the places suiting funnels resources into 369 has had games that he's carried by himself again he's had some great wukong games some great kale games coming out so i think top lane on the top side is going to be extremely impactful then we look at the bottom half of the bracket Zoom is just, I mean, Zoom is Zoom. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm actually going to take it an opposite way. I'm going to go the other side of the map. I'm going to go a bot lane. I think when you look at Loke and Kramer, Huan Fong, Jackie Love, like these are names that are going to be ingrained in people's minds. So I think right now, um, with Loken playing the best, like Loken for me is the best AD carry in the LPL right now. I Somehow, don't think yeah. you agree with me, but, um, and then you got Jackie Love, who went on form, is the best clutch AD carry in the LPL. So I think there's a lot to kind of break down here and digest, but I think. AD carries are going to have a surprising impact in this because I feel like if you can get one of those guys ahead, they're more than capable of carrying again. Well, why don't you agree? What, what AD carry you think is the best? My top three is probably Quan Fong, Joe Mung. Oh my God, who am I missing? I know I had one more oh, person. Jackie Love. Logan. Oh, Jackie Love. There what, we go. They, what, that one was yeah. easy. What about <laughs> left, in, left in playoffs, though, out of, our, uh, of our four? Probably Huan Fong. Okay. So Huan Fong, you'd say well, you think... So it depends, because it, it, it's just like like Dagger just said, right? Jackie Love, when, you know, is having those high highs, is set up to do well, is like the best AD carry in China easily. Mm -hmm. I'd say the most consistently high-level AD carry we have is Huan Fong, to where, you know, Loken was in my top four, like, throughout the whole split. I'd, I'd actually have him fourth, but I think Huan Fong and Jackie Love is kind of a bit above him for me. And then Kramer, what, at the bottom at the moment for you and playoffs? Kramer's just weird, because <laughs> I think Kramer all split's been, like, good, but hasn't been... Like a standout like he was yeah. last year. But against IG, Kramer was insane. So, yeah, I don't want to put too much weight in one or two series. Despite the fact these are playoff series, they should hold the most <laughs> weight. Like, I want to see more. I'm glad because I, I really wanted your take on impactful roles. I think we talk about it a lot in broadcasts as to the matchup to watch. Uh, then progressing forward, before we get into the regional gauntlet, I just qu want to quickly get some theory crafting from you. Uh, finals, LPL, tell me who wins it all. I want I want something hard. Oh, I want something. <laughs> I'll, I'll start for you. Hang on. 
<laughs> hang on, hang on. What's up? That hard hitting, right on the money. Let's go. I need a second. You know, <laughs> TSJ LGD final, and then somehow LGD win. LGD win twenty twenty summer. Your turn. You just did a hard hitting statement for it to be a hard hitting statement. No, no, no. I, I genuinely believe that. So I think we're gonna have a a rematch of spring. I think we'll probably mo most likely we'll get top esports against JDG. Okay. And I'm actually surprisingly gonna inch it back to JDG. Oh. Like. I don't know what it is about JDG. Again, like they, a lot of their gameplay was, it was very much like Sooning, where it was kind of hard to put your faith in for a lot of the the ways they got their wins. But they got I it. still think throughout the year, JDG have shown us that they are a very smart team. They're very good in draft, and they have a good uh, read on what their priority should be, and they they consistently go to that in a, in a best of five like they did in the finals against TS. So yeah. I have faith that JDG can pull it out. I don't know what the score will be, but I have confidence in JDG. Okay. I think. I can't have the same faith in JDG right now after watching them. Like, I think Kanavi has looked really, really good on picks like the Lee Sin and that. I think Loken has looked amazing. I actually think, I still think Yugao is underperforming. I think Lumao is actually having a really bad split as well. Yep. Um, especially if you get him off of something like the Bard, he just doesn't really seem to have the same impact. Um, so I, th I think it's going to be top esports who, so, who take so us. So who's your final? Is it JDG top esports final? You think? Well, so? I just said LGD, so I think oh, it'll be sorry, top LGD. LGD yeah. So, so I think it'll be. T I think top esports will take us. I think. Look, it's hard to to knock down the caliber of players that are on top esports. So that means lyric, you have top esports and JDG going to worlds no matter what. Because if top esports JDG make to finals, yeah, both of them both are guaranteed worlds, yeah. worlds. Mm -hmm. due to auto qualifying points for the runner up having enough over any other team that I first think. And second let's team. be honest. Even if they don't make it to finals, either one of them. I think they both go to Worlds. Yeah. I'll throw that out you there. You know, right also, now. If, yeah. uh, um, if JDG, if LGD beat JDG and JDG, I'm pretty sure they still get a uh, fourth place. They will have 100 points. LGD need to win the championship. <laughs> second will not auto qualify them because they will only have 90 points because that's second. JDG have 60 from spring. They'll get 40 bare minimum. They will auto qualify to Worlds. Uh, so LGD need to win it all, and Top Esports would come second. So that's my theory right there. So I think LGD Top Esports going to Worlds, right, with LGD winning it all. So that's why now you understand why I said LGD winning it all. Dag, do you put LGD in finals? Yeah. Which means not winning it out. You think Top Esports would... I think just eke them out, yeah. Which means Top Esports would be guaranteed, but you need a second seed, which would be JDG as JDG, well. JDG, yeah. And right. then I think LGD and IG make it through Gauntlet. All right, oh, hang on. Cowboy. Oh. <laughs> you want to run the show? <laughs> yeah, you can have the laptop. Let's go into the Gauntlet. Look at me, I'm the, the captain day. now. <laughs> the 10-minute the conversation has just been summarized. There you go. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about Gauntlet as we run through. We've already theory crafted with some teams like JDG Top Esports making a world. I, you know, may, people might say crazy hysterics. Said LGD. I want you all to calm down. It could be true. EDG is on your screen if you're watching from YouTube, and so is WE. But forget about them. Right now, that doesn't matter. What you will be seeing, I believe, as uh, we'll we'll get we'll get this fixed up because IG and FPX are guaranteed into the playoff gauntlet. They are, however, on the bottom side of the bracket. They are in the elimination match. IG and FPX cannot move any further up. So that means out of the top four teams with JDG, Top Esports, Sooning, and LGD, the two that do go into the regional gauntlet will be straight into that third seed qualifying match, which is big when you consider that if it's Sooning and LGD as the underdogs, that's huge to, to be qualifying for third seed of Worlds and get a second chance for fourth seed if you lose out. True. It, they would, I mean, they wanted to go through play-ins, right? They'll yep. get seeded right into groups. Which would be absolutely massive for teams that in spring, I mean, Sooning, wait, they didn't make playoffs. LG didn't make playoffs in spring. No, so there's the Sooning curse. The Sooning have made it the last three years. They have only made playoffs in summer true. every single year. So, yeah, and then LGD, it's been, what, five years now? Four and a half years? 2016 spring. Yeah, yeah, since they made it. It's so. been a long time. Yeah. So, let's continue our theory crafting. IGFPX, we can maybe talk briefly about the matchup. We already mentioned them in, in our quarterfinals and our round one. Uh, do you want anything to add onto this as to who you kind of think and why would be progressing? Can, can I just walk you through my regional bracket? Okay, walk me through. Like That's easier. Easy. Go for so it. So, again, I have... I have Top Esports and JDG qualifying for finals. Okay. So first round is going to be LGD Sooning. Mm -hmm. Sooning's going to take it. I think LGD goes out. Oh, my I, Lord. I really like the way that Sooning played against Victory 5. I really hope they recreate that style. I think that, like, fast, aggressive, put-your-foot-on-the-gas-pedal type of League of Legends is the hardest way to answer playing. I feel like it's why China's been so dominant for like, the past few years. I don't think Kramer and Mark are going to find those lane advantages up against Huanfong and Sword Art. 
I mean, Bin looks absolutely exceptional. <laughs> I'm afraid of the things he can do to Long Xing. <laughs> mm. And despite the fact that I do think Peanuts looks better than SOFM, I think SOFM and Angel will be able to like hold that aggression. I really like the way that Suning were performing in early skirmishes, so I think they'll come out ahead. Maybe like That's a, a three-one sc- uh, scoreline. Soon they're going to Worlds. All right. IG are going to beat FPX. FPX just look bad. Like the thing is, even with IG getting three would by LGD, it's like man, FPX don't look like they have any idea of even how to play on this patch or in this meta. Again, drafting the Lilia, continuously taking the Kalista into bad matchups. They mechanically aren't playing well. Sure. It's going to be Duinby against the world. And when you're Duinby against the world, facing rookie. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but... The other world. Exactly. I don't think there's any chance. I expect a pretty decisive win from IG, which is a reverse of our third place match from spring, actually. Yes, it is. And then IG will beat LGD. Hang on. Oh, all right. Well, you got to you gotta explain that. Because fourth seed qualifier, Yeah. if it's left to LGD and IG, what, just because of Look, IG? Kind of... <laughs> I said I said it before. I honestly feel like IG are a team who shows up when <laughs> when people don't believe in them and when it truly matters. You know most. what you're saying is IG make it to the very last match of the gauntlet once again, second yes. year in a row. Yes. What would the scoreline be? Another best of five that goes three to five two. games. Yes, I expect oh a three my two, God. a three two final against LGD, where hopefully I don't even know if they're going to keep using Balan, but. Again, to me, as long as they can show up that bot lane, whether they're going to do it through reinforcing with jungle pressure with Ning getting down there earlier or something along those lines, they're going to draft smarter because I agree, like, yeah. the big pr- even though I'm fine with IG's drafts in isolation, like throwing that it's an IG caveat, you're not going to win with those drafts up against legitimate teams. Sure. So they're going to need to go back to, like you're saying, that, that top esports style where they were drafting really nicely, very coherently. And if they do that, I don't think they're just going to get shut out in the early game like they did against LGD. And if they don't, I mean, we've seen the clutch factor come in from IG's members so many times. So, Sooning and IG. Okay, so Sooning is the highest. It would actually be kind of hilarious. But at this point, just a heads up for our audience. If it's IG or FPX, whoever to progress through, because one has to go through the fourth seed qualifier, they can't get third seed. It's only fourth seed. Yes. So, we are going to potentially Play-ins. have yeah. a world champion at play-ins as 50% chance, uh, unless LGD slash Sooning can beat them, or if it is a team like uh, Top Esports. But again, if it's Suning or LGD that go through, uh, one of those teams have to win the championship. Otherwise, runner-up with the way things have gone, unless it's Top Esports getting fourth place into 80 points. All, all I know is you guys have made realize how anti-LGD yeah. I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've realized. Um, I, I will just quickly clarify this. If Top Esports get fourth, Suning or LGD can get runner-up, and they will auto-qualify. Top esports need to get fourth, though, just so everyone knows. But if JDG get fourth, they're in no matter what. So JDG, uh, if they're in the finals, they qualify. If they get fourth, they qualify, unless it is top esports in that final to come second. Was that good explanation? I honestly feel like it's just simpler to walk through our individual (laughs) (laughs) practice. Anyway, so you put JDG top esports lyric going in. uh, Again, sorry, top esports is first. Yep. Sorry, JDG. JDG first seed. Toppy Sword second, Sooning, and then IG. Which I, I just love. Thank you so much. Now, Dagda. Because, so, by the way, I'm going to do one of these yeah, as well. Because I, I just throw you guys we, off. We need you to have oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I've been saying things about LGD. Oh, cool. I, 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 got, I got it there. <laughs> Dagda, you're up. How do you uh, top this? Run so, me through your bracket. I think it'd be top JDG. Um, yeah, because you put LGD in finals. Yeah. So if they if still end up in the, the third the seed, gauntlet. but they will have the highest seed. So I believe yeah. the greatest side selection. Yeah. So either way, it's still going to be Clarify. top moving for JDG moving forward off of yep. championship. Well, top winning JDG off of championship points. Then it'll be LGD versus Sooning in that top of the bracket for Gauntlet Run. I think LGD win that. The reason I see it is I think with Mark having that impact in the roaming stages, I know Sword Art does it a certain amount as well. I think that Mark and Peanut have looked so strong and I think I still think Sooning have looked good. I just don't think they've looked as good as LGD. I also mm. think Peanut is a better jungler than SOFM, especially when we look mechanical wise. Um, so I think that that duo between the the mi- sorry the jungle and support is going to look a hell of a lot stronger. And when I've seen Sooning actually start to fall behind, that's where they've really started to struggle. And the okay. everything like the clock just starts to break. There's screws and bolts flying everywhere. And I think <laughs> when you got Sword Art has shown that he can get caught out of multiple positions. SOFM is the same. And I think at that point, uh, that's where hello, it starts to fall. Mr. Kramer, we are we are paging Mr. Kramer. <laughs> have, have you seen him? He actually hasn't done so anymore. <laughs> in the last in, in last playoffs. several series, neither has neither has Sword Art. 
Yeah, but still, I mean, look, I still think that uh, overall, I think that LGD, even when you look at that mid lane, I think Shea has performed a hell of a lot stronger, especially in playoffs buff. I think um, even against, in regular split, like yeah, again, again, Angel's over been Angel. way less. Exactly, and then as well, I think, I mean, yeah, I will give top lane over towards Bin, but I think especially if we're going to start, I think that we won't see the twist of fate in Italy. That was something that we didn't yes. want to talk about that we didn't get to. I think if you're playing against LGD, Italy twist of fate ban, get rid of them. But I see, even then, I still think that if you're on blue side as uh, LGD, you just take the graves, you still end up in a similar situation where you can just out push, or well, clear faster, get out onto the map faster, yep with Mark better and then you still end up in the exact same situation so I think there's enough there where LGD can play through that All jungle right. support and then at that stage getting these early dragons set up forcing Sunni into fights that they really don't want to take and then LGD went out through that so, so they'll move forward LGD then, third seed yeah and then IG FBX take me through who I think IG wins N I have zero confidence in FBX right now <laughs> there you uh, go yeah so IG All move right. forward um, and then and very much for the same reasons Jordan was saying Doombie's the only one that looks good. You're up against Rookie, and unfortunately, like, it's not that I don't think Doombie can match against Rookie, it's just that he is forced into the match against Rookie, which means he can't actually have the influence that he wants elsewhere. Sure. Then FPX fall down, IG move forward, and then fourth I think seed. IG beat Sunin in that fourth seed. Really? Season. Yeah, I think, same again, I think IG's individual talent is going to make it very difficult for them to move, and I think, honestly, if they just sub Southwind back in, I mean, you just want a stable bot lane in a series against Sunni where you're not going to give kills over to Fong, And then you can just have Rookie in the Shy. I mean, I don't think the Shy is going to have as easy a time against Bin. I think Bin has looked really, really good. But I definitely think in that mid lane, Rookie's just going to dominate against Angel. And then Juan Fong will get PTSD from his <laughs> series against the Shy on Orn. As the, uh, I think it was like the Zyre or yep, something. Yep, it was me and you. I remember that yeah, one. That was, uh, <laughs> that, was, that was funny. Yeah. So, fourth seed will be IG. So, again, yeah. going through your top seeds, it'll be top esports. Top Esports, JDG, yep. LGD, IG. Okay. Interesting. You want to... Yeah. Here we go with mine. All right. As the host, normally... I don't get... To, can, I have, can I have this camera for a second? Uh, <laughs> anyone watching on YouTube, hello. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of the time, play-by-plays or hosts will not get to put their opinion forward because we are mediators. We're people who stay neutral, but also we keep the flow of conversation. You don't want to listen to us sometimes. We can be, you know... True. Anyway, so <laughs> as as they've uh, they've dealt with many times, LGD first is where I start this conversation. Faith through what you've seen in their two matches. Go back and watch it, and you'll know why. Running through, they'll win the championship. Second will be top esports based off of points. JDG, they'll be. Oh, I thought we we're going to auto qualify, even if we got fourth. No, because top esports in grand finals negates that completely. We then go into our third seed qualifier. This is where we'll have JDG as the highest seed, most likely, and then Sooning. Now, JDG are going to beat Sooning because, don't ask why, because JDG, <laughs> no, honestly, like, when you think about JDG as a team, you think about not just the individual talent, you think about how they team fight. No, no, no I've heard a play by play rant for a while. And, and go on about comps. What do you want to say? Like? <laughs> He's just soaking it in. I enjoyed the ride. The, the, the biggest thing is for me, for Sooning during the regular season, I have not had that confidence. I came into playoffs going, I'm not excited for Sooning. I think V5 are going to 3-0 them. I had more faith that V5 would beat Sooning than they'd beat FPX. Because of what I saw during the regular seasons, I didn't see that level of SOFM. We talked a lot about, like, Angel, I remember casting at the end of last year going, this guy has potential. He's a really high ceiling. The start of 2020, I thought, here we go again. It's TF and Galio meta. It's Angel meta. A little bit disappointing. And then Bin, I thought, was rubbish, funnily enough. <laughs> Huan Fong and Sword Art were keeping up this team, for me personally. And now running through with one series, I still don't have the confidence, and I think we're going to see Sooning drop. I think Sooning are not going to get through the semifinal at the very least, remember, because I, I put them below top esports. I think they lose the top esports. 3 0. 3 0, I yeah. said. Oh. You know, you're going to be harsh. So <laughs> Sooning are going to lose in this third seed qualifier. The third seed for Worlds will be JDG. We go to the bottom side of the bracket. FPX right now are not the Phoenix. Invictus Gaming, individuality will shine, because if you guys said, as soon as you stop believing, but the problem is, if we believe in this lower bracket match, is that us not believing? You know? <laughs> do, you, do you understand where I'm Has going? Has it negated it? Does no. the, the belief <laughs> that they would beat FPX I'm, then I'm negate lost. the belief to... <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I'm, I, I'm along for there the There we go. Yeah, yeah. R rookie to Smashing Doombi, I liked. I think the shy over Gimgoon slash Khan will be fun too. I honestly think with what we saw in Gimgoon in the end of that last series was atrocious. Tien versus Ning. 
Ning has had one of his better splits, best you'd say as and well. And Tian was the worst jungler in playoffs by far. Absolutely, yeah, by far. Absolutely, and you know, it'd be Nico versus Set. Um, <laughs> so IG will progress through, and then for my fourth seed, this is kind of hard. I was thinking about this while you guys were talking, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to say it's IG once again. Like top esports, they're going to get to that final best of five. Game five, we get the Shy's Vladimir, and Bin's like, "What the heck is this?" And then the Shy's going to team fight, and then we're going to get that five man Hema plague, and from there, IG go to Worlds as fourth seed. And then <laughs> you got players with Invictus Gaming, so that'll be fun. OCE and you know other regions alike, you know CBLOL Turkey, uh, um, uh, PCS has a spot there. Japan, Japan yeah. will be like, well. Here's IG, <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> that's that's actually hilarious. All three of us have IG. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you, players. Team. Yeah, it feels have so a good sorry time. for them. What, what I also like is the fact that we've all sent FPX packing. We've sent the world champions home, saying they're not going to defend the world, yeah. world it, title. It, it kind of like makes you feel bad because yeah. I want to see Doom be at Worlds. Like yeah. this man has been playing so well this split. I love FPX. Like it's. I don't know. Yeah. It's 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 almost as heartbreaking as V5. Almost. I, not, I, not quite, though. Yeah, I, I think for FBX, it's been a slow burn for us throughout yeah. the split, right? Real slow burn as to what we've been expecting. And JDG has been like that, you know, you took an antacid, and now it's a little bit better. Um, so, again, to clarify, LGD first seed. Yeah. And then second seed is going to be top esports, third JDG, fourth IG. Either way, I just want to also point out the teams, our top six is still, even with IG and FPX being the biggest question marks at this point, I, I think we'd all agree, is incredible to state the level of talent that we've had. I even think top seven. Like, I think you still add V5. I think, like, the yep. level of our, like, pretty much every team excluding WE. Sorry, WE, <laughs> but... <laughs> That's all right. Like, Joe's not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's actually, like, really insane to think about because... Yep. I truly believe even teams like FPX, V5, IG can go be put in any of the other major regions, and they're going to be contesting for a world slot, like 100%. So, yeah, I'm just really impressed with the level of LPL this split. It feels like we have the like it has the highest depth of talent, at least since I've been following in recent years. So it's really exciting to see. I agree, and I think a lot of that is thanks to the rookies that we have who came in the split, like Jomong, Huan Fung. Like, there's so many names that have just risen up as Sam as D, rookie talent. Sam D, PP God. Like, overall, the new talent that has come in has just pushed us so far ahead. Oh, yeah. And now that they're really starting to, I think um, it was Munchables who said it was like the changing of the guard. Like, it really does feel like now we're getting okay. Well. The FPX is, you've got to do better, guys, because we've got this new blood that's coming in. They're hungry. They want to push forward. And that's what we're seeing here is them overtaking these guys Which that have so been funny. staples for so long. It's so funny because, in a way, FPX are the, were the new guard coming in 2019, yeah. right? Like, Tien finally got a starting uh, roster. Doombi has been in the league for a while, so he's the exception, starting in QG Reapers. Almost went to Worlds in his first year. Gimgun on the back burner of FPX is, I guess, the franchise player. I guess Eldebus and Chris had only been playing for a year in the LPL. That's you know, true. they were in the 2018 They've version. They've been of together FPX. for a while, but yeah, they're kind of rookies in the LPL. You know, what's themselves. like really insane that puts it in perspective for me. At least for me, teams like OMG and E Star were like 13th and 14th in the league. Mm. But I've Shao seen Curse in top five in both of their respective positions, yep. and it's like, man, like the fact that we have players like this at the bottom, players like Shao Si, who you know isn't technically a rookie, but is an LPL rookie, has only played even one more year outside but of LPL. Curse as well has had very few stints, you know, last summer. Yeah. So it's insane how good our newer players are and, performing. And he had to adapt you know, just on Chelsea as well. I mean, they have to adapt to this region. You know, LMS, very different play style to what happens in the LPL or yep. PCS, I guess, now as well. Um, I want to progress this forward because we have gone a little bit over time. But you know what? I'll smile and I'll say thank you very much to our producer. We'll, we'll get away <laughs> with it. Now, I want big statements once again. You don't have to give it. What a else is left? <laughs> he wants now, Worlds, doesn't four, he? <laughs> thank you so much. Oh we have God. four teams going to Worlds, right? <laughs> you don't have to compare because at the moment, as we're recording this, Rogue is the only team in the world actually confirmed. Yes. There are no LPL teams confirmed due to how our format works. We need to find out at semifinals. Then we will have a confirmation, not guaranteed seed, but an actual confirmation. Will an LPL team win Worlds, first of all? From you know, we we don't have much time to watch across other regions. That's fair. I mean, I've really lacked during playoffs of going and watching second favorite region, which is LCK. No yeah. offense to LEC, um, and LEC third favorite region. Maybe it ties with LCK, but mm. sorry, chime in. Uh, I'm gonna just straight off the bat, Mad Lions top esports and finals, and top esports is gonna win. That's Thank you. what I see at the well, moment. Well, yeah. uh, stare man after my own heart. <laughs> so, so I'm not gonna put who else is in finals, but 
IG's going to win Worlds. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> what? <laughs> the thing is, there isn't too much of an analytical reason here. But I don't know, man. When I look at IG's roster, like just watching IG over these past few years, the fact that IG still got top four at Worlds last year after having the most abysmal summer season. That yes. I watched every game of IG in summer. Like They should not have been top four at they, Worlds. They got 3 0 by LNG, LNG in the first yeah, round. It was, it was absolutely atrocious. But I still think, again, when they're drafting more coherently, when when they can look at these problems with their bottom lane, I truly believe IG can short up. And I honestly think right now IG's ceiling is even higher than top esports. Wow. So I think IG are winning worlds. Oh my lord. Okay. Three zero. I'm so proud anyone. of you right now, you know? <laughs> oh, like... Actually, I think it'll be another LPL team in finals, so thinking that we have four seeds, true. I think it'll Yeah, you, true. you know, I'm going for it now. No, actually, I yeah, I got IG yeah. top esports final. IG 3 0. Oh, yeah, I'm with that actually. <laughs> I wish we had best of sevens. <laughs> I kind of forgot great. that, like, because we got the four seeds, it kind of feels a bit weird. I wasn't really thinking, like, oh yeah, we could actually end up with two LPL teams mm. in the final. But to be honest, actually, no, I take it back. I want one of the LEC teams in the finals, and it's not just so we can 3 0 them. It's actually just so we can um, <laughs> shush. It's actually so that we can. Um, so then there's more exciting. Like, it, it, look, it's if it's LPL, for it's, viewers, it's yes. like the MSC. It's like, all right, well, it's LPL versus LPL. It just doesn't have the same excitement. So I agree. I would like to have another region in that final, so then we can celebrate when Look, LPL. I'd love to see NALCS in the finals, but, you know, since, it won't, since that's not going to happen, LPL, LPL final. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, look, I, I kind of think that it's going to be an LCK team in the final. I, I think, like, from what limited experience I've had of teams like Damwon, Gen G. Damwon naming, looks pretty legit. Yeah, and also... If you're talking about IG, like, let's theorycraft a little bit. If IG go, go against someone, that is going to be a sick matchup. Like, solo lane yeah. of heaven. When you talk about the the before Showmaker hitting, like, new heights. Rookie hitting new heights. The Shy and Nuggery going head-to-head. -head. <laughs> like, that's fun because they're similar players. Um, I do think it's going to be an LCK team in the final. I just believe they ha have adapted quite a lot. From what I've seen, there's so a lot sir, more skirmishing. What's yeah. your LPL team in the final? You're the one who wanted big statements. <laughs> LGD. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. LGD. It Oof. is. It is. It's LGD Jesus. or top esports in that final. I'm just going to say LGD with the momentum. You know, I have really flip-flopped. I've realized I've got <laughs> yeah. this train. Yes, you have. I've missed I don't even stop. know what train you're I mean, on at this I was, I was watching How Mate Your Mother, and you know, there's the relationship highway as an example, right? And the exit's, you know, six hours, two days, Three weeks. I don't like, feel like you're on a train. I feel like you're no. on like a spaceship <laughs> off somewhere else. Like. There's no going back at this point. <laughs> it's going to be LGD in the finals. And it, oh my, it'd be Peanut versus an LCK team as well. Oh, Peanut spicy. versus Canyon. Oh, imagine if it was, yeah, spicy. imagine if it was Peanut versus Gen G would be fun after the abysmal 2019 year he had. Oh, boys. Well, look, at the very least, I think an LPL team is going to win Worlds. Is it bias? No, it's quality of skill. Well, of um, course, we're all biased. We're all yeah. LPL we're, casters. We're biased casters, yeah. Yeah. But uh, LPL teams looking this strong. I honestly think we're going to win Worlds third year in a row. Any of these teams could do it. LGD is what I'm going to say and how I'm going to end uh, end the show. But imagine if it was someone like Sooning or whatever. Wow. Yeah. Respect Sooning. Don't or whatever that. <laughs> no, okay. All right. With how I'm saying about LGD, imagine if it was. It could be Sooning. It could be Sooning. I, I, the whatever is, is a filler word. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> how it works but <laughs> ladies and gentlemen playoffs are going to be steaming up and i'm glad we could have this conversation gentlemen you have a couple more weeks remaining and then we finish off lpl absolutely completely uh -huh. again i thought i was going to say a couple more questions <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was uh pondering this the other day actually we we finish off our summer champions on the 27th where like for europe summer champions on the 6th of september me and you have talked about this a lot yeah lck's third seed is just determined on september 9th like yeah. play and start the 25th so uh we're, we're finishing because we're, you know normally lpl is the team to finish last, last yeah and it's year. always the rush here for you know the the players in the lpl to, to go overseas now of course worlds confirmed in shanghai it's awesome yeah. We're based in Shanghai. <laughs> also awesome. <laughs> and uh, us finishing a little bit early. Time to ponder and we get to, you know, watch the other regions finish off. I know, uh, Lyric, you being from CB LOL in the past, we'll get to enjoy CB LOL. I'm actually just looking at the date I now. actually still watch it every week. I know you do. You, <laughs> it's you tell it's me. funny. That's the second region the I watch fifth, the most. The 5th of September, the championship comes up. I get to look at OPL, which is actually on the 28th. They finish very early. <laughs> wow. They finish a day after our champion. I can't watch it. Yeah, we, pods, are, we, we, have a, we have regional finals. But gentlemen, I have to say, it has been a pleasure casting with you and being with you and, you know, basking in your presence. I love you. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> I thought, I, did I not read the room? I, love, I, 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 I said, temperature not there. Temperature yeah. check for lyric. Can we put that on? Uh, temperature check for lyric. <laughs> Burning hot, volcanic. <laughs> Absolutely volcanic. I love you too. I love you guys. This I has love been you a, too, guys. A, a great right. split. We're ending on a nice, nice bit of you know strength. <laughs> and uh, Joe feels left out watching this. So, Munchables, we <laughs> Munch, love you we love too you as too. well yeah. for the four of us. And, you know, send it out to Penguin and Clement who yeah. are, have been helping us from afar. It's great to have the team together. Great to have the uh, podcast running through a season. I think this has been the longest time, you know, or has been the first LPL official podcast, essentially, coming through as well. And big thank you to Dagda, to Lyric. Thank you to our English production as always. Ladies and gentlemen, just a quick reminder, our championship is... On the uh, 27th, I believe. I'm actually just going to look at this super quickly. But more recently, more prevalent is on the 22nd of August. Uh, as you're watching this on Saturday, we begin with Top Esports and Sooning. The day after is the 23rd of August. If people don't know how to count, that's okay. Um, that is on the Sunday, and that is LGD versus JDG. With our third place on the 25th and our finals on the 27th of August, staying on patch 10.16. No Yone, because you guys say he's broken. But that's all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again to my... A company in this. Uh, I, I hate long goodbyes, but you know this is how it's going to be. Uh, if you open your door and there's a sink there, oh would you let that sink in? I'm going to leave you with that note, ladies and gentlemen. It is bye for now, but not forever. We'll see you next year and towards the playoffs. <laughs>